welcome to this class about uh, Blender. And so I'm gonna start like, um, this is your very first uh, look at Blender, like you've never opened it up before. Um, and so as you can see, this is your main screen. This is your viewport, I guess. And um, I guess I'm gonna start out making sure <laughs> it's so difficult for me to uh, talk like nobody's here, but I know people are here. So, um, all right. So um, first thing you need obviously is your mouse. And, um, and right now I'm clicking the uh, middle mouse button and moving around uh, the screen this way. So you just click on it and move around and you're looking at this box that is always there when you first open up uh, Blender. And you can um, zoom in and out with your scroll wheel also. So middle mouse button rotates you or orbits you and then the scroll wheel goes in and out. Now, if you hold down your middle mouse button and the shift button, that's how you pan around like this. So this is important because as you're sculpting, you're just like when you're actually sculpting a piece of clay, you're looking at it from all different angles. Same thing here. And so you do have the screen, of course, that you have to like uh, take into account. So that's why you might have to like, if you wanna look underneath it, you go like that and like kind of like move it around, zoom in. Um, and then, um, so scroll wheel goes in and out. You could also hold down the control button and just uh, move your mouse in and out like that. And if you have a Wacom tablet, you can just set your first um, button um, on your um, on the on the stylus to be the middle mouse button, and you can do the same thing with that. I'm using my stylus now. I'm just holding shift and the first button, control in and out. All right. Just in case um, you don't know how to do that, all you have to do is open up your preferences and your, if you're using a Wacom tablet, open up your preferences and then um, you just set it and you can uh, add it to Blender. Like um, you can click on uh, the little plus that says add application and just say Blender. So every time you open up Blender, it'll, it'll be set up with that. It's really the only thing you have to do with a tablet is make sure that first um, little button on your stylus is the middle mouse button. So this, these are the important things is again, to recap, going in and out with your scroll, your um, middle mouse button scroll to zoom in and out, or you can hold down the control and the middle mouse button, panning and that's it, orbiting. So, um, just going to tell you now a little bit about uh, principles of in the 3D environment. Over here, you can see this little thing that shows you the Y, the Z, the X. And these lines here do the same thing. Like the red line is always going to be the X and the green line is always Y. There is a Z, which is up and down. That's always blue, as you can see here. So. Um, Um, if if uh, if we were actually in person, I'd have you uh, try it all out, and um, and then I would make sure that hey, it's working. Everybody got it. Everybody on the same page. Cool. Um, so I'm assuming that's all working out for everyone. All right. And now I'm going to just take a look at around your uh, screen here. Um, There's a lot here that could be overwhelming, but I'm gonna keep it simple. So right now, basically not, not a lot of this stuff is important um, to what we're going to be doing, which is just sculpting. Um, 
And right now, as you can see, um, we're in user perspective mode. Perspective is when things are closer to you, they're bigger. Like see how this little uh, edge, the corner of this box is bigger than the far away. I mean, obviously, you know, perspective is. But if you push number five on your um, keypad, like the five that's all the way to the right, it'll change it to user orthographic mode, which is a cool way of saying, you know, everything is not distorted by perspective. And that is a way I like to work, especially when I'm sculpting it kind of, well, you'll, it'll make more sense when we get to that part. Um, keeping track of the time here. So um, I'm assuming everybody has a keyboard that has um, the buttons on the right. If you don't, um, I'll show you one, one, one thing you could do. And this will be a cool way to show you the preferences. So you'd come up to edit, go to preferences, and then we would go down to input, and then you would just click on emulate number pad. And that way your numbers along the very top, your one through um, zero, all the way on the top will be like your number pad. Um, so I'm gonna kind of jump in now to uh, the sculpting stuff. There is a aspect about sculpting that you want to keep um, in mind how complex your sculpt is. Right now, our sculpt is very simple. Um, but I'd like to show you how you could see what's going on um, as far as like your vertices. And um, I guess uh, another aspect of 3D uh, sculpting is um, there's lines, which would be like this line here along uh, the edges. And there's vertices, which would be the points that are connecting all those lines. And then there's faces, which are the actual faces that is created by the lines that are connected to the vertices, um, if that makes sense. Um, and so if you go up here to this little thing, which is your, um, um, actually, I'm sorry, this one, <laughs> viewport overlays. And we want to click on this thing here that says stati statistics. And then you'll notice over here, you'll see all the statistics, uh, all the <laughs> statistics about what's going on. So we got uh, this, I'm going to select it. So we got one object selected out of three, um, which our other objects are this light and this camera. But this is our object right here. And then we have eight vertices because we just have a square, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have the edges and have six faces because hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you. Um, and here's another cool little thing you could do is push down the Z on your keyboard and just hover over wireframe and let go. And you could see the wireframe. So you could see there's where everything is. Um, and then just hover over the solid. So your wireframe, now we're solid. All right. Um, and I, I think uh, if I tell you now a little bit more about this topic while we're here, um, it'll make more sense. Right up here where it says object mode, that's the mode we're in. If you wanted to edit this box, you would go to edit mode. And now everything's selected. I'm just gonna click anywhere, click and unselect it. So here's our box and it's really easy to see. Now I can, you, you can still go to wireframe and solids but you can really see how um, it's made up of points. I have this point selected and now I'm just selecting that point. And you can see when you select a point that's being selected and these are the edges and then these are the faces. All right. So um, I think we're going to come back to this later. Um, for example, you could think of this as the clay that you just got out of the box and plopped down on your table. And it's just like the shape of the box that came in. It's, you know, you really need to like work it and get it all malleable 
before you can actually um, start to sculpt with it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to go back out of edit mode to object mode. And there's so many different ways to do all of these actions. Like if you just touch your tab button, you'll switch back and forth between edit, edit and object mode. But I like doing this because um, you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm back in object mode. And we're looking at this box. And we want to make it so it's uh, more easily sculptable. Right now, it's as I said, it's just got four faces. So I'm going to show you one thing about this over here. I'm probably jumping around, um, but hopefully it makes sense. Now that we're over on this side of the screen, up here is um, a way to look at all of the things on your screen. Like that's a light, that's your cube, that's your camera. And you can come over here and click on this to look at your light, look at your cube, look at your camera. Um, we're focusing on the cube right now. So that's what this bit is about. Down here, there's all these things. <laughs> um, that um, can, we're, we'll get into them later. But uh, as, as we're going, this little um, wrench here is the first thing we'll mess with. So we have this box selected. We're gonna click on that wrench, which is a modifier for the box. And then we're going to come down here to subdivision surface. Just click on that. And already, it's already, um, cut that box up into a bunch of more uh, surfaces. So it's already like taking that box of clay and uh, kind of like forming it and messing with it and making it more into a circle or a orb. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, I like to start out with, if you click on this to, um, let's go to five and um, just make the render five as well. And so now, it's got a whole lot more surfaces to deal with. So we um, just turn that box into a uh, orb or a, I don't know, <laughs> a ball. <laughs> um, and so you wanna come here to this little uh, square and apply that. So now that modifier is applied. And so now we're going to get into the sculpting part. So now that we have that, with a whole bunch of more detail. The geometry is much more complex than it used to be. As you can see over here, look at all the edges now. We got 12,000 and 6,000 faces, 12,000 triangles. Um, and depending on your computer, you keep an eye on these numbers. And uh, depending on your computer, you basically uh, wanna keep it under a million. So we're, we're pretty good. Um, and I'll show you how you can manage that. Um, so we're going to go from object, object mode to sculpt mode. And now Man, we're Can in... I interrupt you? Yeah. Um, we have a question from Lizette oh. on her Q&A. Um, they say, whenever you have time, no rush, what kind of computer do you use for sculpting in Blender? And what level of complexity can it typically handle? OK, yeah, that's a good question. And that, that's great. If somebody has a question, um, like right now, I'm on a laptop. Um, which is pretty old, I guess. The, it has a GPU in it, which is a 1060 um, GTX. And um, it's like an i7 um, Intel CPU. Um, and so, like I mentioned, it really is dependent on machine how complex you can get. Like with this one, with just this, uh, you know, like the 1060, GTX, I mean, I could, I could get up to a million fine, um, like a million vertices or whatever. Um, and I mean, I, I taught this class once with just a bunch of uh, IMAX and they were not the newest ones. And this was like, goodness, five years ago. And, you know, um, nobody really had any issues. You only have issues if you're like, whoa, I've got like 8 million vertices going on. And that could be an easy problem uh, to fix. Um, a lot of times, like whenever you start out, 
we're we're going to start out basically you know basic and simple and so uh, all this stuff that i'm doing right now anybody could do basically with pretty much any computer um it's ideal to have like a dedicated uh, graphics card um so i don't know if i answered your question that would vary vary from computer to computer that's why i'm, I'm using this uh, laptop so i can demonstrate that no, no, not a greatest computer, you can do it. Um, the things that will slow you down is when you get to like rendering and things. Um, like if, if you make your your, your um, picture and you want to render it, which means um, it's like the end result with the lights and the materials and everything, depending on that complexity, if you have like reflective surfaces and whatnot, um, it might take a while or if you're simulating things like smoke and liquids and cloth and all that stuff that really will slow you down in which case sometimes your computer might not even handle it at all but in that situation you can use like a render farm online and um, there's a free one for just for blender called sheep it it's s-h-e-e-p-i-t and um, you could like make your even 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 a render. If you don't want to render on your on your computer, if your computer is too slow to render, you can just um, upload it there, and then that means other people will render it for you, and then you'll have it done. That's really great. I know I'm getting way ahead of myself now. We haven't even gotten to rendering, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, they said it did answer my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, they yeah, have another can... question too. Oh, okay. What's um, up? Why is turning a cube into a sphere better than just adding a UV sphere? Well, this is just the way I'm doing it. Um, like like uh, you, everybody knows there's a million ways to do these things. Um, and this is just my method um, that I have found useful. And my goal for you at the end of this time here at the end of this uh, project is to be able to just practice sculpting. Um, just to be a good sculptor and creating um, creating stuff. So you're, you're basically creating the actual assets that would be used in maybe just take, you know, a picture, uh, or you could later animate it or rig it, or you could, um, you know, retopologize it and make a, you know, UV map and, and go all out and texture it. Um, you know, and then, you know, rig it and animate and all, all of that stuff, which is all wonderful, amazing things that are super fun to do. Um, but right now I'm just focusing on the, the main part, in my opinion, which is the actual sculpting. Because once you get the sculpture made, then you could do all that stuff. But you can't do any of that stuff without the sculpt. And again, that probably didn't answer your question about the UV sphere, um, but uh, I like to do it this way because uh, I started out with the cube and turning a cube into a ball with subdivisions, um, it, it ensures that every, everything is quads. As you can see, uh, they're all little squares. There's no triangles, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Hopefully I answered your question. Um, that says it, um, perfect, thank you. Okay, <laughs> um, but yeah, but no, like exactly. I know what you're saying, like later on, like I love making characters and stuff and to make eyeballs, I'll use the UV sphere and I'll just uh, make it smooth. And, and that's super easy, but all I'm doing with those spheres are keeping them as spheres. I'm just, I'm not gonna mess with them because they're just gonna be spheres. But this is gonna be all sorts of stuff. And so I like to start out with, with quads. Um, so, all right. So as I've been scroll, um, orbiting around this ball that I just made, it's like, whoa, where, which is the front, which is the back? Um, if you come over to your numpad and push the number one, it'll always, make you go to, to the front. So you're looking straight at it in the front. And so as I'm moving my little cursor around, you can see it is also being mirrored because I have, I think it's automatically up here. It is set to mirror on the X axis. 
which is that red axis. So it's mirrored. So everything you do over here, as you can see, that little dot is going on on the other side. Um, obviously, you would to turn it off, you just click on it. Because like, say you want to sculpt some like hair or something that's like si parted on the side, you, you want to turn that off and like sculpt the hair and then turn it back on again if you're doing like ears or something that are symmetrical. Um, and so right now I'm looking at it straight on because I clicked the number one and, um, and uh, I'm in the sculpting over here. You can see I'm in sculpt mode. And here's an important thing is to use dynamic topology or dyn topo, uh, dyno topo over here. You click on that little X, it'll give you this little warning to say, okay. And um, I guess I can explain a little bit what dynamic topology is, which is great. Um, so before um, we created that, that complexity of geometry by doing that subdivision. And so right now that's all we have to deal with. Um, I don't know if you'll click on wireframe. So you can see that is subdivided and it's at that complexity right now. Um, going back to solid. And typically if you're just to uh, sculpt it, you'd have to stay at that complexity and you couldn't get any more detail or if you wanted it to be any less detail to bring down the vertice count, you couldn't do it. But with dy dynamic topology, you can do it. So if you um, hit this little scroll down button and um, it's always set when you open up Blender to be in relative detail, which means if you're zoomed in, your detail level is gonna be different than if you're zoomed out, which I, I don't recommend. I recommend constant detail. So, um, and it'll, it'll move you to uh, your resolution of three, which was really low. Now, for example, let's see what the resolution is of that um, orb or ball. <laughs> I don't know why I keep calling it an orb. I'm gonna click on this little eyedropper and click over here on our ball and come back up here. And that's at 17. So that's a pretty um, you know, uh, rough way of sculpting, but it's always good to start start rough and end up fine. Just like if you were to mess around with a, a ball of clay, you're not gonna do all the little details first. You're gonna really kind of like mash it up and, and get it the way you like it and then go back in and do the details. So you can always change this resolution, which is detail level. Um, so right now, um, obviously there's nothing going on here and I got that set up. I'm trying to get everything set up for you like you were starting this. And here you can see the radius and the strength of your brush. Um, I like to use the brackets like in Photoshop. If you go right bracket and left bracket, it's doing that. Or you could come up here and mess around with that. But I like to do this because you can see it happening. And, um, and then the strength is here. There's I'm going to try to keep this really simple and just say use this for the strength um, if you want to do it, you know, more strength or less strength. Um, and one thing I'm going to do, I always forget to do this. I'm going to go back into object mode and scroll out a bit. And um, I'm going to have my ball selected and click on the S button, S like Sam, <laughs> and then make it a little bigger. Um, I find around there is a good size to start sculpting with. Um, and you can see relative to these squares, how big and small your, uh, your ball is. Um, and I won't really get into that right now. It's just a personal preference more than anything. Um, now I'm going to go back into sculpt mode. And here's a little kind of annoying thing. Every time you leave sculpt mode and come back in, you have to click uh, dynamic topology back on again but everything will still be as you left it. Constant detail, subdivisions, I mean, the uh, detail level at 17. So I'm going to um, look at it in the front with that number one again. Okay, and, and um, to, to e more easily see what you're doing sculpting, I like to set up a, a mat cap. Um, um, and so 
over here are a few a few different uh, things. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this super super simple. So I'm going to click on on um, that's viewport shading. That's not what I wanted to click on. All right, I'm clicking on all sorts of stuff that you know. I'm assuming if you were following along, you'd be like just clicking on all these things. So um, it's a good way to um, figure out what's going on. But um, let's see. All right, here you go. What you want to do is click on this down arrow on the edge end of all these. And again, my screen might look different than yours if your screen is bigger. Um, like you'll have more room on your screen for stuff and you won't need to scroll around as much. But over here is set up at um, on Studio, Matcap, and Flat. We want to click on Matcap and then I, you click on the Matcap button and then you click on anywhere in here and you have all these options. And I find some people like this one, but I find that this red just just looks more like clay to me and um, it's easier to see the light in the dark. And then another thing you could do is come down here, leave all this stuff off. You can have the outline selected, but I'll turn on shadow as well and turn it down a little bit. This is just helpful to see when you're having overhangs and, and stuff. But now it's looking more like a ball of clay. And so um, I'm going to just um, I'm check in on the time here. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go fast. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of tools over here and all of them are useful, but there's, man, look at them all. But there's only a few that I really use uh, to sculpt at this point. I'll use clay strips is my basic go-to. And uh, over here, if you click on the very first button, which is a little tools, you'll see here what you've just selected. I just selected clay strips. Like if I selected here, it'll show you, oh, draw. So, and um, all of these things are useful to look at, but up, up here, the radius and the strength are the main, the main things. So with clay strips, like it's really big. And so I'm going to make it small and Zoom in a little bit here. I'm, I'm going to use my, all right. I was going to use my, um, all right. I'm going to stick with the, the, the mouse since probably everybody has the mouse. So I'm going to zoom in. And so right now I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, that's, that's like a little bit higher resolution that I would want just to start out your basics. And so I would go to this drop down and say, maybe I want 15, you know, and, or maybe, you know, you could say 10. And um, the cool thing that's happening right now is as you're drawing on top of that higher resolution, you're lowering the, like, like the, um, when you look over here, you can see the numbers kind of, I'm, I'm covering up this stuff, 32. They're like going down because I'm lowering the complexity. And an easy way to, to see what's happening is to click on wireframe and you can see what's going on. Like see how this was the higher complexity and I'm going over it and it's lower. So, um, I don't know, I find that that's a really important for me when I'm trying to manage the uh, complexity of your, all the triangles and stuff. And um, see, I'll go back to, so for example, um, here is just a tip that I do is if I wanted all this to be like, say up here, looking at it on wireframe, this is all one, you know, solid complexity, um, uniform, I should say. And what I like to do is bring the strength of your tool way down. And then you have your it's set at 10. And then you can make it bigger. 
And then if I want, I'm just like kind of drawing over the top of this. And like, if I go to wireframe, you can see that, see what I just did? This is all getting a little bit more complex and bringing this down. So um, you could either do that to add resolution or take resolution away. And then you can just come up here and bring your strength back up and um, sculpt away at it. So hoping all this makes sense. Um, and again, I'll, I'm just gonna stick with using um, my, my mouse. So um, just in case people don't have a tablet, it makes sense. Um, so here I am, obviously I'm just clicking the button. I'm just clicking the button and it's adding stuff. I can make my brush bigger. And um, do that and I can make it smaller and I'm just adding on top. And it is, as you can see, being mirrored. Now, um, say I wanted to uh, dig in all you have to do is hold down the control button and now you're digging in. And there you go. All right, so normal, just pushing down the button, pushing down your uh, left uh, button on your mouse is adding and now I'm taking away with the, um, and again, Say uh, you wanted to come in and do a little bit, you know, um, the closer you are, obviously, the more like minute details you get, but also you can really see now that uh, the resolution is pretty low. Out here, it looks pretty good. But it, when, you, when, you're, when you get to later and you wanna put in these details, that's when you're gonna go and like say, Okay, well, I'm gonna do one more thing, one more thing. So we have this, I'm adding with the, the mouse button, control, I'm digging away, and then shift button is smoothing. And right now the smoothing is kind of aggressive. Um, but if you wanna change the smoothing, you just go down here, this little button is smooth. And I'm just gonna, the strength is pretty much. I'm gonna bring it down. Okay, and that's that's a lot better, I think, because I, I want the shapes I'm making to, to stay. I don't want the smooth to smooth it out. And what I, what I like to uh, think about when I'm smoothing is if you ever work with clay, like a, like a wax-based clay, like monster clay, you could take a heater, heating gun and heat your clay and it will like do exactly what this is going on right now. So, it's so easy to, when you're working with clay, get your heating gun and say, oh, am I gonna just set my, you know, set it in one spot and just like really uh, heat this up. And this is what will happen. You'll just melt it. You'll just be like, oh my gosh, all my details are going away. I just melted it, you know. Control Z, of course, and this will get it back, but in real life with clay, you can't control Z it. But that's an idea of why you'd want to lower your strength of the um, smooth. And I'm gonna come back to here. My clay strips is still at this strength. So whenever you set your, um, your strength and your radius and everything, it'll stay that way if you leave it. So, um, so there we go. And so that's kind of my workflow or a workflow I recommend is, you know, building up, taking away and then smoothing it out. And the nice thing about smoothing, it's not adding or, you know, it's not adding resolution. It's just smoothing. I don't know how to describe it, but it kind of looks like it's better, like smoother resolution than like this is chunky and that's smooth, but it's still the same, if that makes sense. You're not like, like here, I'll add something and you'll see, watch this vertice count. When I pick up, it just went up to 35,444. And now when I'm smoothing, I'll smooth that out, pick up, it didn't nothing change at all. So, all right. And so this is looking around 
and then pushing number one to get back to straight. And then, um, so I guess, um, all right. I think a good way to show really quick um, the, the basic tools you'll use for sculpting is just to sculpt something real fast. Well, um, okay, I'll just, use, I'll just use this that I got started just to keep. So this is obviously gonna be some, some, weird, uh, some weird creature or something. So. Is it okay to ask another question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally okay. okay. So I have a question from Micah. Do you have to install a custom matte caps to get the color? I don't have matte caps available oh, to no. me. It's part of it's part of Blender. It's part of Blender. So if you go over here and you click on the shading, and when you click on this, I mean, do you see these things? That's that's where it is. Michael says no. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's the hard part about not being there. Um, all right, yeah, I'm not sure why you would not have your mat caps. Um, like, I don't know what, would, what happens. I mean, do you even have this little downward arrow at all? Um, Micah says, I can work with white object just fine. And okay. they do have that arrow. Okay, but when you click on the arrow, nothing happens. Like as far as like the viewport shading. Um, Cause this is how it is. This is what you're looking at, which like it's made to be usable. Um, and then Matt Cap. It says, I get scene lights, but no viewport shading. Hmm. Because that's what happens when you click on these things. Yeah. Micah okay. says, when I go into settings, it tells me I can install a custom matte cap. That's interesting because uh, you don't need to do that. Um, like, like, it should be part of, I mean, you've got the latest version of Blender and everything. Um, so I can't imagine why it would, unless maybe you like, you're on a computer without a graphics card. Um, like I would go to, I'm just going to preferences um, and then system. And here's where you can see your render devices and um, if you click on CUDA, which would be um, like NVIDIA stuff, OpenCL would be like your AMD stuff. I'm not sure if it's because I have, yeah. It, it's tough to troubleshoot from a distance, like I said. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure, like I'm gonna, if I turned off, I turned off my, uh, or just clicked on none and came over here and I can still see it. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Yeah, they said, don't worry about it. I can do some research on my own. You don't okay. have to waste time on this though. I don't want to no, waste it, everybody it, else's time. Thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah, um, but if you can get Mac apps to work, um, I recommend it. Um, all right. Okay, so we've got, the um, right now I'm on clay strips, like I mentioned, clay strips is something I use. Like for example, like right now I'm thinking of making this into some kind of creature where like the mouth would be down here, the nose would be here, and these are the big old eyeballs. And like, this is where the chin would be. But when you look at it, it's still a ball, right? And so what you can do is um, use these tools down here, which is super helpful. I like to start out with grab. And what grab will do is um, you can set the strength and the radius just like the other tools. 
I'm just setting it up. Like if I want, like see, I'm, I'm actually like grabbing the clay and moving it around. And now it's not so much of a, a ball anymore. Um, and, um, and this is important to, to move around with your middle mouse button to look at it from all the angles. Cause like over here, like I'm gonna make my brush smaller and like pull out the nose or pull it out this way to make it bigger or pull out the mouth area and actually pull out the chin area. And you know what I mean? Um, hopefully that makes sense. This is a way you can really just mess with the shape. Um, and I'm, I'm just being really like extreme. <laughs> I, I wasn't planning on, on making a face at the beginning, but I'm just gonna do it. And so here's another example of like, well, it's kind of starting to look a little bit the way I'd like, um, but I don't like all of the, um, it's just all the scribbly parts that I did earlier, you know? Um, I just want this to be more, I don't know. I'm just trying to show you. And so in that case, this is where I'll just, I'm just holding down the, um, um, making the, using brackets to make it bigger and smaller and holding down the shift button and just smoothing that out. And like, this is a case um, where you might want to like uh, make your smooth strength higher and then just use the smooth button. And yeah, this is a, I like to see other people who are uh, good at sculpting at this stages, because this is like the stage most people will get and, and be like, ah, it's too hard, it doesn't look good. <laughs> but it's, it's like the beginning, you know? Um, and so, you can come back to your um, grab tool. And again, you'll figure out as you highlight things, it'll say grab over here. And the, you know, as you can see, I'm highlighting it. And then over here, it'll actually show it and it'll say grab. So it, it's really easy to make sure you're getting what you want. And like, see how this indent is here on the forehead. I could even either leave that there and like sculpt it up or I can, Take, take my brush and just make, make my brush bigger and bring it out. Um, and so that's, that's a brush I use a lot for, for getting these first stages of sculpting down. And then the difference between the grab brush and the snake hook, the snake hook is great because it, um, it's great for things like say you wanted to make uh, I don't know some horns or whatever. It just you just grab it and um, you make it smaller, and you can make a lot of cool shapes that way. And it doesn't it doesn't disrupt the geometry. Like if I if I use the grab and pulled pulled out extreme, it would really disrupt it, but look at how nice the geometry is in those I just pulled. I don't know if that's making sense. Um, but again, I'm checking out the time and I wanna make sure we stay in our time. <laughs> so I wanna give you the basic tools. So I use the uh, clay strips to build up. I use the grab brush to mess around on a kind of like a chunky scale to get everything kind of moved around like you would uh, with actual clay and then use a smooth brush to smooth it out. And then the snake hook to bring out these kind of like elongated forms. And then um, there's one more uh, tool I like to use, which is the um, crease um, brush. And yeah, I'm, on my other, um, <laughs> normally my, on my, uh, my screen is a lot bigger on my computer I normally use. So, I don't, so here's the screen crease brush. And this is great for things like 
And again, I'm just scrolling in to go closer. I'm holding down the shift button and my middle mouse button to pan it up and then just orbiting around like that to get to the angle I want. And then this is the crease brush. And like say, um, I think it's, I can lower it. I'm just lowering the uh, radius with my brackets and, and just kind of like making a little mouth. And again, I could like raise it and it's more extreme to get, and I'm just like putting in little creases. Um, and again, if I wanted to like bring in the eyeball like that, you could use this crease brush to, to, to do that. Or you could use the um, clay strips brush and come in here and add some, see it? You add stuff and it's like chunky and then you hold down the shift button and you blend it in with the, um, the smooth tool. Um, and again, also if, if you're looking at this and you don't like all of these uh, squares and lines and everything, uh, you can get rid of that too um, if you wanted to. Um, I'll get rid of uh, the floor. I'll get rid of the axes. Now it's just, and you do that over here. This is like the overlays. So you can turn things on and off. That's how I turned on the statistics, if you remember. And you can turn off the floor and the axes. So I kind of like to have it clean, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. So, um, yeah, um, uh, obviously there's a lot of other things you could sculpt beside a character's face or whatever, but um, I figure that's something a lot of people are interested in, so why not? So I'm just using the smooth, I'm just holding down shift right now and like kind of smoothing that. Um, and um, I keep checking on the time here. <laughs> because I think this is supposed to be an hour long. So um, um, see, I did that on accident, but um, actually that looked kind of cool. Like if you wanted to do a cool kind of like helmet or something. Okay, and I guess I should, I wanna show you how how you would um, put more detail in. So I'm just like smoothing that out. And then see here where I lost that edge, you can come down here and bring, use the crease, the crease tool to kind of like show where that's going. Um, and then, okay, I'm gonna come back up here to the clay strips and zoom in and say, I wanna put some detail in here. All you have to do is, it's really nice when you have the constant detail setting because I can click on this little brush and if I ever want to get back to that detail, I just click on it and that's at 12. So let's say I'm going to put a detail of um, 25. First of all, I'll see what that looks like. See, that's a lot higher. And so like, if you wanted to do some, um, you know, you know, ornamentation or something, you can zoom in and add some of that. And if you still think, well, I mean, you could really work on this. I'm just like using the um, smooth on it at this level. Um, but now when I like look at this with um, wireframe, you can see, look at that detail there. So that's a lot higher than the rest of it, but the rest of it doesn't have to be at that high detail to get that high of a detail, if that makes sense. Um, and this is super powerful when you're sculpting you need to, keep, to keep everything at a manageable size, because um, you will want a lot of detail on, on things like that, which say you're doing ornamentation or whatever. But you don't need a lot of detail on, you know, just like 
like facial features that are like very smoothed and um, just regular. Um, so yeah, there's that. I mean, I was, <laughs> okay, we got 10 minutes, but um, I'm trying to decide how best to use this. Okay, I'm gonna show you one thing because obviously you're probably not gonna wanna just build a head and have your, have a head just, I mean, that's cool, you know, but um, I'm going to come out of sculpt mode back into object mode. Now I'm looking at this object. If you click anywhere or click anywhere, it'll deselect it, click it, it'll select it. And it's still cube. You can over here in your sidebar, you could, um, name this anything, I just named it face because it's a face. But say you wanted to add more to it. Um, gosh, um, looking at straight on, looking at it from the side. Um, all right, and again, if you want to, if it helps you, you can turn on the X and the Y axis Sometimes it's helpful to match the colors if you don't know, because the X over here is red and the Y is green. All right, so I'm gonna say I want to add a neck. I'm gonna add another um, piece of geometry here. So I'm gonna say Shift A for add, and then mesh, and then let's say, so here's the UV sphere that we were talking about earlier, um, but I'm gonna, add a cylinder because I want it to be a neck. Now a cylinder takes place or it comes into being right in the middle, but I want to move that. An easy way to move things is if you up here is click on move to look at the viewport gizmos. So just click on this little down arrow and click on the move. And now you can move it. So I just moved it this way so you can see it. So it's really easy just to click on the little green or red or blue arrows and it'll move exactly in that direction. That way you won't lose track of it. You can click on the G like for grab and move it like this, but it's like sometimes you're not sure exactly where it ends up. But when you move it this way with the arrows, it'll go exactly where you want. So as you can probably guess, I want this to be the neck part. It's pretty small, so I'm gonna, click on the S button for scale, and it just makes it bigger all the way around. Um, that makes sense. So say you wanted, the, uh, you wanted the scale just to be on the Z axis, which is up and down, you would say S for scale, and then Z for Z axis, and it's just gonna go like that, um, up and down on the Z axis. Say you wanted it to be a little bit wider on the X axis, which is the red arrow, red direction. Then you would say S for scale and X, and then go like that. And I'm just touching the S and then, or you know, pressing the S once and pressing the X once to do that. If that makes sense. Um, and so um, another thing you could do is rotate this along the X axis by pushing the R button and now you can rotate it. And I think it looks more natural as a neck going that way. And so that's what I did. And so uh, maybe I think it's a little bit too wide. I don't want it that wide. So I'll say S X for scale and um, on the X axis and there you go. So these are still two pieces, this and this. And like if I looked on the wireframe, you could see that it's completely uh, one thing and that's completely another thing. And this is maintaining an intersection into it, but it's still its own object, if that makes sense. What I want this to be is one complete object so I can sculpt it as a neck. So, um, what we're going to do is join them together using a, a Boolean operation, which um, to get that ability, I know I'm probably going a little fast, but you can follow along. Yeah, I wanted to show you uh, how to use your preferences. 
So we'll go up to preferences and click on preferences. And then another thing you'll use a lot if you use Blender is add-ons. Blender comes with a lot of add-ons built in, but they're not activated automatically. Um, so you come up to the search function and say B-O-O-L. Oh, and it'll bring up object Google tool. And I have it, I have it checked already, but you would just check it. And so now when we come down here and click on the neck, and then we want to connect it to the head. So I'm going to hold down the shift button, click on the head, and you can see that's outlined with orange and that's outlined with uh, yellow. And we'll come to object. And since we have that Google tool add-on selected down at the bottom, it'll be here. And again, there are hotkeys and shortcuts for all these if you want to save time, but I'm just, this is an easy way. And then you, if we wanted to cut a hole out of it, we'd say difference. But if we wanted to be one with the head, we say union. And so now it's all one thing. Like for example, when I click on wireframe, look at that, this neck goes up and it's not, you know, it stops there and that's hollow inside. Um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and again, um, come back to solid. And here's another example too, like when we come back into sculpt mode, this is very basic and that's very complex, but we can bring this up to the complexity very easily with dynamic topology. Um, so I'm going to come back into sculpt mode and oh, wait a minute, I'm going back to object mode, selecting everything. All right, and um, I just did this earlier. I'm not sure why this is orange at the moment, but um, anyhow, now I'm going to double check to make sure. All right, well, this is exactly not happening the way I, I, I um, did it before, but this is supposed to show you how you can add on to your, um, I think it's because I was like going really fast or something, but um, man, anyways, because I seriously just did this and that wasn't operating that way. All right. Okay, I'm going to see if this is gonna work, but, um, and I'm doing the bool tool and union. All right, well, something happened and then this is a thing that something would happen for you and, um, and we'd have to figure it out because I seriously just did this. Um, but the thing with Blender sometimes is something will happen and um, you don't know exactly what happened. And then you just have to, you know, go back and start over. Um, in this case, I would probably save this and then restart. So I would, um, X gets rid of that. Oh yeah, another really important thing to do is save, um, which is just control S like ever and, um, and go ahead and save it and saved as that. Um, so let me see what time it is, 7.31. Well, if that last thing I did worked, you would know how to just keep adding on to it. And it normally works. Okay, now you get to see my desktop. What I just did right now is starting it and starting it over again. Um, so object mode, I just, um, 
was not certain why that didn't work. It's kind of uh, frustrating for a student, I'm sure. Um, but these are things that happen. Okay. I wonder if it's because, okay. I think I just forgot to, you know, click on, like, remember how I told you every time you leave sculpt mode and come back in, you have to um, click on this dynamic topology button. I didn't do that. So, so we'll look at wireframe and look, it's great. Okay, so <laughs> that was my problem. Um, and so just to show you how it works, um, See, I'm sculpting, I'm kind of like making a joint and then smoothing it, or you can just smooth it. Um, and then I'm gonna make this bigger and then bring down the strength. And then I'm, I'm, adding, I'm adding to that geometry now. So like clicking on wireframe, you could see it's very dense, whereas before it, it's not dense, but it's dense there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like reiterating that because I think it's important to, uh, to keep that in mind and, and to know what's going on. So there you go. Hopefully through that little episode I had, you realize how things can um, seem to be problems, but, but it, it really was just a very simple a simple matter of clicking on the dynamic topology and um, everything fixed itself. So see, now I'm making that into a neck. Um, and you can do things like, uh, I like, I wish I could talk about all this other stuff, but the elastic deform is a great new uh, tool that's in, and it will deform things while maintaining um, detail. Um, and I believe uh, Disney developed this and made it available to everybody. Um, well not, you know, the Disney animation company or whatever. Um, so it's a great way to um, see it, to just move things around. It's different from the grab tool. And the, I think the only way you could really appreciate the differences of everything is just to um, just to mess around with it. But I think if you use like these tools, you could probably come up with anything you want. And again, right now I'm in perspective mode. Here's a good example of see how there's some distortion just from perspective the way you want it. You'd expect it to happen. But when you click on the five, now that's ortho orthographic um, and that's why I like to sculpt in orthographic. And then later I'll, I'll, if I'm looking at it through the camera, I'll do perspective. So if I had time, I would get into rendering, um, setting up lights, <laughs> and then how to move your camera around and to animate the camera movement to make some cool, at least camera animations. Um, and it's very simple to say, rig up just two bones, one in the neck, one up to the top of the head, and you can like have your character's head follow the, the camera as it's moving around it if you want. But as I said at the very beginning, the main thing is the sculpting part because without, without your sculpt, um, <laughs> um, you know, there's nothing to work with. You need to have something to, you know, paint on, animate, all that stuff. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I don't know what time is it? Oh my gosh. I was gonna show, I think, I think you would want to know this if you were building characters is how to put eyeballs in. Um, 
which is just going back out into object mode. Um, and then I'm gonna shift A for add, I'm gonna mesh, and I'm gonna do the UV sphere and bring it out here, looking cool. Um, what you can do is, uh, I can't, shade smooth. I just shade, I never shade smooth your sculpt as you're sculpting on it because seeing all of those facets and seeing the geometry is helpful. But if you're making an eyeball, you know, you shade it smooth. Um, and then um, I would come over here to your modifiers, add modifier. We're going to make a mirror modifier. And look at this. Um, we're going to mirror object face. So I'm mirroring. And I don't, I'm not going to get into all the details, but now it's it's mirroring based on the face. If that makes sense. I think as you see me moving these things around, it'll make sense. But you want the eyeballs to go where they should go. And if it's based on the symmetry of your face, oh, I just I clicked it. That's where they're going to go. And the, the, all the things before I mentioned apply to this as well, like S for scale to make them smaller um, or bigger. And, and it's interesting how big eyeballs actually are. Um, well, okay, I'm just gonna do that. So now my eyeballs, I wanna keep them separate from the face so I can mess around with them if I have to. Um, as I work on it. And later on, you could just join. Um, I'm not gonna get into all this stuff, but I just wanna show you how you would put eyeballs in. Um, and now I'm going to go, I'm gonna select the, the face part, leave the eyeballs where they are, go back into sculpt mode. And now with my um, clay strips, I'll click this here so you can see, clay strips are, I'm making the clay strips brush smaller. I'm zooming in so I can see what's going. Whoa, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, and here we go. I get so ahead of myself. You got to click on dynamic topology. <laughs> and, uh, and now that crazy thing will happen again. Um, or maybe it will. What is going on? Um, but um, all right. But the, I added the eyeballs. That's the important part. So um, I'm 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 like super rushing because I'm trying to keep this in time. But as you can see, you could just sculpt over. Um, And I think um, if you go back to object mode, you can make sure what you're selecting is the face. Now are spheres, face, spheres. All right. It's so funny because I did all this before, you know, and then um, I think one, one one thing that oh here we go <laughs> so it's working fine I'm just freaking out but um zooming in I'm building up now around those spheres your um whatever you call them eyelids I want the strength to go up so it doesn't take so long to do it there eyelids. And you know, shift to smooth it out. Those under eyelids are pretty extreme, but I'm smooth. I just keep smoothing it. You can kind of use smoothing as um, like a sculpting tool in itself. I'm just holding down shift and just smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. And um, there you go. So he's kind of an interesting fellow, anyways. Um, but uh, since those eyeballs are separate from this, I could do that. 
that's one nice thing about that. Um, or like if you didn't want to add those eyeballs in that way, you could actually sculpt them in, which was a little bit difficult to make things look perfectly smooth. Um, and then keeping that in mind, you could also have made this whole helmet separately as well by bringing in like uh, saying shift A for add and a, a big uh, sphere and then just molding the sphere around the head um, without doing what I did with the neck, attaching it. And that way you can like say make a helmet and like, oh, I'm gonna make another one. And then they drag that helmet away and make another one, stick it on. The reason I like to kind of join things together and it's just more organic um, way of building things. Um, yeah, sorry I, if I got a little bit crazy. I'm trying to keep, there's so much I would want to, uh, so much information, but hopefully, um, see, I just moved uh, the face off of the eyes. That would not happen if, you know, they were all connected. And there is ways of connecting them, like joining, um, um, but, uh, I'm just trying to keep things uh, reasonably simple. There, I've got it back uh, to normal. So I guess now would be the time for any last questions. I know I went crazy with stuff. All right. Is everybody still here? I don't know if I messed with. <laughs> Everyone's um, still here. I'm just giving time oh, to okay. anyone okay, to type cool. questions. I didn't know if I like, clicked a button and just kind of erased everybody or something. So, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. See, so, yeah, my, um, my resolution is still super high. I'm going to put that back down to 10 and then go over these high resolution stuff and get back there. Trying to like do some concept work here, bringing in those horn things into the design of the actual helmet, make it kind of a more unified All right. Well, you're welcome, Lizette. I'm hope hopefully this was useful information, um, and that you can replicate it and like do your own thing. And you can make animals, trees, anything else. And Lizette says, "Thank you for the lesson." And I don't see any questions, so I think we're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thanks for the opportunity, everybody to show you how to use Blender as a sculptor.